boys and girls, I'm Mrs. Cortez, and today I will be sharing the story, Hello Neighbor, The Kind and Caring World of Mr. Rogers, by Caldecott medalist Matthew Cordell. This book is found on Sora. It's our insides that make us who we are, that allow us to dream and wonder and feel for others. That's what's essential. That's what will always make the biggest difference in our world. Fred Rogers. Hello, neighbor. The kind and caring world of Mr. Rogers by Matthew Cordell. Welcome to Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. As you can see, this is no ordinary neighborhood. It's the set for a television program a children's television program that's connected with countless families since it was first broadcast nationally in 1968. There were many things that made it different from your neighborhood. There were actors, camera operators, musicians, stage sets, and puppets. It took a great deal of work and love to bring the neighborhood to life each day. And it was all started by a man named Fred McFeely Rogers. Growing up near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Fred had many interests. He especially loved playing with puppets and music. He learned to play the piano at age five. Fred playing his first piano. Fred's grandfather, M. Feely, always said, Freddie, you made this a special day just by being you. Fred playing with his baby sister, Elaine. Fred's family was proud of his talent and encouraged him to study music and composition as he got older. Fred playing the piano, Grandmother McFeely bought him when he was nine years old. Fred was shy and often lonely. He was sometimes bullied, but whimsy and imagination was helpful to him. And so was his faith. After college, he planned to become a minister and years later, he did become a special kind of minister. But at this moment in his life, something unexpected happened. In those days, television was new and just beginning to become popular. And Fred, Fred didn't like what he saw. I saw people throwing pies in each other's faces and all kinds of demeaning behavior. And I thought, why is it being used in this way? This could be a wonderful tool for education. And so I said to my parents, you know, I think maybe I'll go into television. So he went to work for the National Broadcasting Company, NBC, in New York City to learn how television programs are made. At first, Fred simply ran errands and fetched things that were needed around the studio, and he learned a great deal. Best of all, he learned that connecting with younger viewers through children's television was what he loved the most. Fred moved back to Pittsburgh and began working on television programs for children. He continued to stay behind the scenes, but he took on a more creative role, drawing on his background in music. He wrote songs and created characters, returning to his childhood love of puppetry. The Children's Corner As an adult, Fred remembered the wonder of childhood as well as the fears. He spent a lot of time studying and learning about children and about their needs and feelings. And in time, it became obvious to him that too much of children's television was no more than silly and flashy entertainment. Fred had a new mission to create a very different kind of children's television program that spoke to its audience with respect and understanding. A program where Fred would perform as never before in front of the camera and speak directly to his audience. And he would simply be his honest self, curious and playful, attentive and compassionate. The greatest gift you can give is your honest self. On February 19th, 1968, Fred became a permanent resident of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood when it premiered nationally on public television. And now, Welcome back to the neighborhood. Fred began every episode by singing his welcoming song and changing into his comfortable cardigan, sweater, and sneakers. 
let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Then a new idea, person, or place would be introduced. Just like in life, there were good times in the neighborhood, like visiting the circus or a neighborhood school. But there were also difficult times too, like saying goodbye to a beloved pet. Fred understood that children have many feelings and interests, and all of them are worth mentioning and exploring. Mr. Rogers had many regular visitors, like Mr. McFeely, a friend who brought deliveries and discoveries, and Joe Negri, who owned a nearby music store. Welcoming and accepting others and their differences was of great importance in the neighborhood. Fred made sure to include a diverse range of actors performing important roles. Police officer Clemens was the first African-American character to appear in a recurring role on a children's television series. Fred realized that children were naturally curious about the world around them. So as Mr. Rogers, he often took us out of his home to meet new people and discover new places. We found out how people make things and how workers do their jobs. Crayon factory, toy ball factory, sneaker factory, trumpet factory. We even met world famous artists in the neighborhood like Eric Carl, Yo-Yo Ma, and Margaret Hamilton. Each day in the neighborhood, we spent time pretending when Trolley took us from Fred's television house to the neighborhood of make-believe. Here is the neighborhood of Make Believe. An ensemble cast of puppets and people acted out a story about the subject introduced in the beginning of each episode. When Mr. Rogers visited a school, the neighborhood of Make Believe built a school. When we saw how people make crayons in his real neighborhood, the neighborhood of Make Believe held a coloring contest. Fred loved the expressive and connective nature of playing and listening to music. So lots of music was played throughout the neighborhood. A jazz trio played the background music throughout the program. And of course, each day in the neighborhood, Fred sang the songs he had composed. Throughout his career, Fred wrote hundreds of songs about the important things children feel and learn as they grow, like many ways to say, I love you. What do you do with the mad that you feel? And it's you I like. It's you I like, every part of you, your skin, your eyes, your feelings, whether old or new. It's you I like. Every visit to the neighborhood would end as it began. Mr. Rogers changed back into his jacket and dress shoes while singing his song of love and reassurance to let us know he would be back next time. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling, you're growing inside. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling, the feeling you know that we're friends. Fred played many roles in the making of more than 900 episodes of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He wrote the scripts. He was songwriter and singer, performer and puppeteer. He oversaw and approved what went on in every episode. Beyond his own contributions, he truly loved working with others. He respected and appreciated the talents and artistry of all who were involved in the creation of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And because of this, everyone felt connected in a very sincere and personal way. Just like a real neighborhood. Just like yours. Thank you for listening. You're a very special person. There is only one person like you in the world. There has never been anyone exactly like you before, and there will never be again. And people can like you just because you are you. Fred Rogers.